Thank you very much, you. President. So I start immediately. Uh, the social doctrine of the church, <clears throat> as we know, is built on principles such as the dignity of the human person, the common good, justice, solidarity, the universal destination of the goods of the earth, as well as participation at subsi and subsidiarity. Up to recent times, it did not include expressively the concept of fr fraternity, yet fraternity may appear as a new version of solidarity. It is more than solidarity. Solidarity may be organized and institutionalized, fraternity not. Fraternity is a feeling potentially shared by all human beings following their need of closeness and empathy for others, starting with the family and the local community. My question is, can fraternity be considered as belonging to the very structure of human society, or is it mainly a moral request of Christianity? In the encyclical, the concept of fraternity goes along with social friendship. Both need to be clarified. In social philosophy, as soon as Aristoteles, social friendship appears as a dynamic inherent to the building up of a community. It is called philia, which means friendship, stating that a society needs to be strengthened by the feeling of togetherness of its members. The juridical framework of a society is not able to create the necessary bond of common commitment to the common good, which is the well being of the whole. My first point is charity and fraternity. <clears throat> it is amazing to discover that fraternal love under the words charity and love is a key principle of the social encyclicals since Leo XIII. It came to light in the debate between justice and charity. The social teaching of the church uses to balance the concept of justice with the concept of charity, which is properly a Christian virtue as go going beyond the mere requirement of justice. Charity demands social justice. It is not a matter of goodwill. Charity enhances the sense of justice. Charity <clears throat> Leo XIII highlights brotherly love in a Christian sense as demanding a st stronger commitment than mere friendship. Leo concluded his encyclical by calling for Christian charity. The reason is that there is no justice without charity. Justice alone does not meet the needs of human beings. Only a personal commitment to the well-being of the other of the of the others help overcoming situations of injustice. The social teaching of the church starting with distinguishing justice and charity. It is clear that society must be governed by justice, yet to implement the requirements of justice more than commutative justice is needed. What is needed is charity. Charity was conceived as a movement of a single person giving generously from her wealth to the poor with no legal obligation to do so. This understanding of Christian charity is not correct. Charity is the inner conviction that justice must be improved. Helping a poor person to overcome her situation is a duty of justice. So charity moved towards a broader sense of justice. Pius XI said, the poor are not committed to charity alone. Not the, he, he, he insisted, not the economic dictatorship, I quote, but loftier and nobler principles, social justice and social charity must therefore be sought 
instead <clears throat> a juridical and social uh, order which will give form and shape to all economic life. Social charity, moreover, ought to be as a soul of this order. For justice alone can, if faithfully observed, remove the causes of social conflict, but can never bring about union of minds and hearts. It is clear that society must always progress in matters of justice, but individuals may progress in charity. The social doctrine of the church aims at sharing its views with people of other creeds and world views on the basis of what is common to all humanity. It does not call for faith by Christian faith, but Christian faith gives always new impulses to our vision of human nature and human destiny. Our call is on reason, but our use of reason is enlarged by faith. Human capacity to love develops on several levels. It may be distinguished in eros, sensual attraction, philia, reciprocal friendship, and agape, the Christian name for giving, giving up one's life for the sake of others. These words are unknown to the Greek philosophers. Agape is something more than friendship. It is unconditional and looks at loving one's neighbor for his own sake. It takes care of individuals and of the common good as well. Agape has its perfect realization in the person of Jesus Christ who gave up his life for the sake of all humanity. Agape does not search for compensation, it is gratuitous. While solidarity can be enforced by law, charity cannot. Law cannot compel anybody to love another person or, or give up freely one's life for others. There is obviously no precise separation between these three feelings. The highest you reach, the more spiritual and universal it is. In Christian moral theology, agape is a gift of the Holy Spirit, which enables a person to overcome all kinds of selfishness and to put itself at the service of others who need your help. The point is that the Holy Spirit, and this is important, <clears throat> The Holy Spirit does not limit his gifts to those who explicitly believe in Christ. Those who effectively live in an attitude of self-donation gift are moved by agape and transcend the natural tendency of human beings to concentrate on their own immediate interests. In Christian moral theology, agape is a specific gift of grace our chancellor will come back on this, uh, on this issue, very important. In a word, human persons naturally seek for community and justice, but our structural weakness does not allow us to overcome the narrowness of our interests and greed. Grace is an inner power that liberates us from our selfish tendencies and gives priority to pull us out of ourselves and meet the needs of the community whose life we share. In the tradition of the social doctrine of the church, a specific sense of agape has been understood under various wordings. After Leo, Pius XI calls it social charity. Social charity ought to be as a soul of a new economic order, an order which public authority ought to be ever ready effectively to protect and defend. We need, did he say, people able to manifest their care for the working classes who know them well and their minds and wishes and can reach their hearts 
with a tender brotherly love. Paul VI popularizes the expression civilization of love as the expression of bonds of fraternity. Relying on his own experience as a worker, John Paul II, in his encyclical on human labor, did not hesitate to speak of social love. John Paul II observed that man's situation in the modern world was far, far removed from the objective demands of the moral order, from the exigencies of justice, and still more from social love. To be morally acceptable, the social construct demands more than a set of laws. It needs social love streaming from the inner conviction of each member of society. The companion of the social doctrine of the church rightly says, and this is an important uh, quotation, I think, no legislation, no system of rules or negotiation will ever succeed in persuading men and peoples to live in unity, brotherhood and peace. No line of reasoning will ever be able to surpass the appeal of love. Only love can animate and shape social interaction, moving it towards peace in the context of a world that is, never, that is ever more complex. Social love is a force capable of, of inspiring new ways of approaching the problems of today's world, of profoundly renewing structures, <coughs> social organizations and legal system systems from within. So charity is by no means limited to interpersonal exchanges, but is at the heart of community making. Social and political charity is not exhausted in relationships between individuals, but spreads into the network formed by these relationships, which is precisely the social and political community. It intervenes in this context, seeking the greatest good for the community in, in its entirety. With Caritas in Veritate, uh, Benedict XVI uh, did added an important point. Charity goes with truth and so clarifies its location in the social doctrine of the church. Charity is at the heart of the church's social doctrine, did he say, every responsibility and every commitment spelled out by that doctrine is derived from charity, which according to the teachings of Jesus is the synthesis of the entire law. It gives real substance to the personal relationship with God and with neighbor. It is the principle not only of micro relationships, friends and so on, but also of macro relationships, social, economic and political ones. Laudato Si <clears throat> uses the expression civic and political love. Care for nature is part of a lifestyle, which includes the capacity of living together and communion. Jesus reminded us that we have God as our common father, and that this makes us brothers and sisters. Fraternal love can only be gratuitous it can never be a means of repaying others for what they have done or will do for us. That is why it is possible to love our enemies. This same gratuitness inspires us to love and accept the wind, the sun, the clouds, even though we cannot control them. In a sense, we can speak of a universal fraternity. Now, as we know, with fraternity, uh, Fratelli Tutti restates these concepts, quoting the Redemptor Hominis, Populum Progressio, the Compendium, social love makes it possible to advance towards a civilization of love, uh, writes Pope uh, uh, Francis, 
to which all of us can feel called. Charity, with its impulse to universality, is capable of building a new world. No mere sentiment. It is the best means of discovering effective passes of development for everyone. Social love is a force capable of inspiring new ways of approaching the problems of today's world, of profoundly renewing structures, social organization, and legal system from within. So, three minutes. Yes. Right. I, I, I skip and go, go to um, number three. And, and the number two, I, I, I try to say that uh, <clears throat> the social uh, doctrine of the church as a whole is inspired by more than social uh, principles. And it's a, a commitment of faith. Fraternity by law. <clears throat> the fact that fraternity should not be considered as a goal out of our reach may be asserted by some legal references. Everybody knows the motto of the French Republic, which mentions fraternity after liberty and equality. <clears throat> Fraternity was adopted after many hesitations and contradictory explanations. Uh, whereas liberty and equality are likely to receive a legal definition and application, fraternity appears as more as a moral obligation which cannot be sued in justice. But in recent constitutional jurisprudence, fraternity has been evoked in, a, in the making of social and care policy. Because of its Christian connotation, it is now avoided, avoided rather than enhanced in the French public debate. Fraternity appears in the Indian constitution <clears throat> and uh, the most convincing reference to fraternity is to be found in the first article of the Universal Declaration of, of Human Rights all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. In French, it is said, en un esprit de fraternité. So um, personally, I do not see many, a great difference between brotherhood and frater fraternity. But our president will give us some explanations on that point. This statement is coherent with the universality of the first of the principle of fraternity. We note the tension between what humans are and how humans could act, while dignity and equality, reason and conscience belong to the essence of a person, are innate and prior to any convention, Brotherhood belongs to the sphere of moral behavior and action. It cannot but be produced freely in conscience and reason. Fraternity is a matter of education and conviction. In both international cov covenants of 1966, the word is absent, <coughs> the word fraternity is absent, as well as the word solidarity. At least the word French friendship appears once in the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. In a way, Article 1 of the De Human Declaration of 1946 is a call, a call for further progress in the human community, so overlapping with the mission of the church, which is to convince that fraternity is the strongest link allowing people of different worldviews to join in a shared access to the goods of the earth. My conclusion would be the world is playing under our eyes a tragedy of national competition, political populism, economic war, migrants exclusion, human trafficking, denial of justice for the poor, discrimination of minorities, all the contrary of fraternal mutual acceptance. In spite of this regression in local and international affairs, there is no reason to dismiss the call to fraternity as unrealistic or utopic. 
We must not resign ourselves to be wars to one another, like Hobbes. History bears witness of unexpected reconciliations. I mention always France and Germany after three wars in 70 years. Also an epochal change in the relationships between Jews and Christians has been observed in the last 50 years. More recently, we must mention the promising development of the dialogue between the Holy See and the Mosque al Azhar with a document on human fraternity for world peace and living together, signed by Pope Francis and the Grand Imam. It starts saying, faith leads a believer to see in the other a brother or sister to be supported and loved through faith in God who has created the universe, creatures and all human beings equal on account of this mercy Believers are called to express this human fraternity by safeguarding the creation and the entire universe and supporting all persons, especially the poorest and those most in need. This document is an achievement and should serve as a model for other reconciliation processes. Between Christians and Muslims, fraternity can easily be seen as a common principle as both religions believe in God as creator. Where there is no faith in the creator of the humankind, fraternity should be deduced from our common nature, conscience, freedom, dignity, reason. Fratelli uh, Tutti is a call for reshaping economic, social and cultural life in accordance with the principle of fraternity. What we need is a new impulse, a change in our mind, which implies stop devastating the planet, stop economic exploitation of the poorest population, back to human integral ecology, which is the first step able to raise a new feeling of fraternity. I thank you.